Now, when the Baltimore Ravens waived wide receiver Shamar Bridges, it wasn't a big surprise because we really hadn't been hearing much of him in training camp or throughout the preseason. Uh, when it was announced that they waived Sean Ryan, uh, even though he had that really nice first preseason game where he was catching everything, uh, it still wasn't a big surprise that they let him go either. And the same can be said for Dante Demas Jr., who had that really, really nice catch against the Bucks the other night. But those guys just had so much in front of them in terms of wide receivers on the Ravens depth chart but the one that I'm shocked about I'm really surprised about that the Ravens actually did it was them letting go James Prochet now I, I never thought that James Prochet was going to make the Ravens 53 man roster but I did not see the Ravens just straight up cutting him I, I did not see that going down I always thought that the Ravens would either stash him so they would come up with some phantom injury and then he would be on injury reserve for the year or they would still come up with that same phantom injury and then they'd do an injury settlement with him and then waive him and then he'd be a free agent that way. But Ravens were like, no, we're not going to go through all them hoops. We're not going to go through all that stuff. Uh, we're just going to do this straight up. And it's tough. It's tough. And I know with James Prochet, it, it's been rough. I actually thought that he wasn't going to make the roster last year but he did and i was completely wrong about that uh but this year the ravens they they let him go they released him um so with james prochet a couple of different things could happen he actually could come back and be on the ravens practice squad he is eligible to be on their practice squad uh so that is a possibility but i i wonder about that because i wonder if the ravens are like hey prochet you want to join our practice squad as a wide receiver and i wonder if he would even accept that because in my opinion, and I know a lot of y'all share the same opinion too, I think the best thing for James Prochet would be a change of scenery. Because it's, it's just been a rough, rough year for James Prochet, uh, in my opinion. Um, it, it's been really tough. Uh, and just speaking about on the football field, especially recently, uh, even in, but dating back to during last season too, whenever the ball goes his way, whenever he would be on the field, especially the big moments, just – Bad stuff will just keep happening. And when bad stuff just keeps happening over and over and over, especially when you're on a job, that can mess with your mental so bad. And hopefully for James Prochet, his mentals can be good. But I just think a fresh start somewhere else would be the best uh, for James Prochet. Uh, but we'll see what happens with him in the future. Uh, hopefully, uh, if he's going to continue playing football, hopefully he can catch on with another team and he can go do his thing and he can be provided with a nice opportunity and he could just – Dust all the, the, the baggage off that he had from the Baltimore Ravens. Everything that happened with the Baltimore Ravens, that can be a thing of the past and he can move forward and it can be a lot of positive going on for James Prochet. So we'll see what goes down with him. Now, another slight shocker, slight shocker, just a little bit, uh, was the Ravens cutting Melvin Gordon. Because you know the Ravens, they love them some veterans and they love some veteran running backs. And, but for them to go like really young at the position, I know Gus L was probably the most experienced running back that the Ravens have, but for him to be the guy with the most experience, that, that says a lot about how the Ravens feel about not only him, but the other three running backs that made the roster. And this is cause for celebration. Now, we're not celebrating that Melvin Gordon is losing his job. No, we're celebrating the guys that made the team, though. Uh, we always knew Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, Justice Hill. We always felt like those guys were locks, but there was that fourth spot. There was <laughs> there was that fourth spot that was tricky and felt like it was a battle between Melvin Gordon and Keaton Mitchell. And especially judging by Keaton Mitchell's retweets, he made the roster. So that is a beautiful thing. Our guy, he made the team. Uh, so that's exciting to think about. It's exciting to think about how the Ravens could possibly use him. Uh, will they use him as a return man? Will they use him as a gunner? Will they use him as a running back? Catch passes out of the backfield, hand it off to him. You got a lot of options and a lot of different things you could do with Keaton Mitchell. And now he'll have an opportunity. Whenever he does get an opportunity, it ain't like he's going to be getting 10, 15 carries a game. No, that would be crazy expectations right now. But he does have a big opportunity in front of him. Because now he can be playing behind a starting offensive line, playing with the starting receiver, starting tight end, starting quarterback. Now he will be going against starting defenses too, but he should be in some good shape. So I, I, I'm looking forward to that. Now, um, somebody else, speaking of offensive players, uh, somebody else who was waived today was Travis Vokalek, the tight end. 
And we know he had made some nice catches uh, this preseason, especially them t- touchdown catches that he got. Um, but his him being waived, I, I don't think that was a big shocker at all. Um, because I've always felt like I, I never felt like he was going to make the roster. I felt like it would be practice squad at best, but I don't think he'll even sign with Ravens practice squad. Reason being, because I think somebody else is going to give him an opportunity to sign with them. Uh, he could look at Ravens practice squad the same way that I look at the Ravens tight end room right now. I feel like their, their tight end room is set. They are good to go and they don't need no more. Don't need no less, but they're good. So I, I didn't feel like he really had a chance to make the roster and I always felt like that third spot was Charlie Col- Colas. But he could look at it like that, like, oh, man, these Ravens are set. Their tight end room is set. I don't have a chance for playing time, obviously, unless somebody got hurt. He could sit and wait on a practice squad. He could still make some good money now. So being on a practice squad would not be a bad thing at all. But if he's looking for money and opportunity, then he could look for it somewhere else, in my opinion. Uh, and I ain't kicking him off the team. Now. Hey, you want to join practice squad, no problem. But I think his best opportunity to get more opportunity would not be with the Baltimore Ravens. But we'll see. But if he on a practice squad, hey, Ravens, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. You want to keep Oglek on a practice squad, no problem. Throw him in there. Um, but let's go over some other, some other moves that happened with our beloved Baltimore Ravens. Because I still haven't seen the official Ravens uh, roster yet. They still ain't put it out yet. So it's, it's 449 right now. Now, Raven, I, I was thinking, all right, Ravens going to put it out at 401 because every year they do this. They do this every single year. They wait till the deadline, and then usually a minute after the deadline, that's when Ravens will drop it on us. But Ravens playing right now. They playing games right now. Y'all want to play games? Keep playing games, Ravens. But, you know, I still love you. I, I can't do nothing about it, but wait. I ain't got no choice. But anyway, um, some other guys, and this is from Jeff Zrebic. He said, Jeremiah Moon, uh, he got cut. Uh, Sean Ryan, who we mentioned earlier, uh, Travis Vokalek, who uh, we, we, we just finished talking about, uh, obviously James Prochet. Uh, now, Kevon Seymour, that was a surprising one, but Jeff did break it down. Because like, I, I expected Kevon Seymour to make the roster. I was like, oh, yeah, he's a lock to make the roster. Uh, but Jeff Zrebic pointed out, he said the Ravens are releasing him, but it's likely only temporary. Uh, he's a vested vet who isn't subject to waivers. So that means that when he's released – he gets released. He is immediately a free agent, uh, and he doesn't have to pass through the waiver wire. The waiver wire is when a player gets released, and any team can claim them. Now, the team that has the highest order in the waiver wire is the team that did the worst of last year or whatnot, and that would be the Bears uh, since they had the number one pick, I believe. Uh, but anyway, or the, they had the worst record, excuse me. So the Bears have the first dibs on whoever gets released, and the bottom team would obviously be the Chiefs because they were the Super Bowl champions. Um, he said the Ravens also waived uh, offensive lineman Tykeem Doss. Uh, they also waived un- offensive lineman to Sean Manning and Jalen Thomas. Um, they also waived David Sharp. Now, David Sharp, that, that's an offensive lineman. Now, oh, another small surprise was Christian Welch because I thought that he was not necessarily a lock to make the team, but I thought he was going to make it. I thought he was going to make it because he'd been on special teams for the Ravens these past couple of years, and he's a big hit on special teams. Um, so I, I could see them bringing him back to the practice squad, though. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. But, yeah, so they we're still waiting on that official uh, roster, even though that official roster is still going to be some big changes in it because they're going to be moving some guys around, putting some guys on IR and whatnot. They still could release some guys and make some. They could still do some other stuff. So we're waiting on that. And when that comes out, we'll of course go over and whatnot. But these moves, these were probably some of the most significant moves that we saw today. Um, and yes, yeah, tough business, man. These GMs, it, they, they are in such a tough, tough, tough spot because these GMs, they end up drafting these players. So these GMs, they make the call, hey, do you want to be a Baltimore Raven? Or hey, really, whichever team that they are the GM of, but they, they call these players, hey, you want to be on our team? Da, da, da. They draft them. They meet their friends, their family. They meet all of that. They meet their kids, they, all of that. And you really form these relationships. But then... You got to be like, hey, I got to let you go. I got to let you go. So that it, it's a tough business, man. It, and NFL is such a tough business in a million different ways. Uh, but this is just a, another one of them. So just like a lot of NFL players are, a whole lot when it comes to 
having been on a team, just like a lot of them unfortunately are now in this tough, tough, tough part of the business. We out.